Great, and I just wanted to finish up this section of the presentation with a few words on damages issues. What we're really talking about here are the effects of off-label promotion on off-label prescribing. And as we think about that, two questions, at least two questions, uh, immediately arise. The first is, which prescriptions are in fact off-label? Now that may not strike us as being all that uh, uh, necessary to ask, but it, in truth it really is necessary to ask because you can't measure uh, the effect of off-label promotion on off-label prescribing without a good sense of how much off-label prescribing there was. Well, why is that a challenge at all? It's a challenge because when a physician prescribes a drug, there's no particular requirement for them to specify on that prescription what disease was the basis for writing that prescription. So in many instances, with the exception of, say, electronic medical records for which that answer or that question might be answered quite, quite directly, we have to look in a lot of different ways at trying to match up the information that we observe with what the intent of the physician was. And in particular, or beyond that, not only do we have to, um, in a sense, match up the language of the label with the language of what exists in the patient's medical record, we also have to understand that, um, that the nature of the off-label use is greatest or tends to be greatest for chronic diseases. Diseases like painful conditions and cancer and psychiatric disorders. These are conditions that are chronic in nature, tend to be. And so even if it were the case that in the moment, the reason the physician states that the prescription was forthcoming, it may be that it's occurring in the context of a diagnostic history for that patient that has a very long tail. And so when we go to measure how much off-label prescribing there was, all of these clinical considerations need to be taken into account in terms of the patient's history. The second question that's very important from this measurement perspective leading up to damages is the question of causation. And in particular, trying to understand and isolate those specific prescriptions that were caused by the inappropriate or allegedly inappropriate off-label promotion. We know that not all off-label prescribing would go away in a but-for world characterized by the elimination of the conduct in question. And that immediately raises the question of, well, if some amount of off-label would still remain, the question is, how do we measure that? And two specific ways, two general ways, I should say, have been developed in different cases to try to address this, this concern. In some respects, you could think about it as either trying to isolate what's not at issue, or you could isolate what is at issue from a causation perspective. The first approach actually was used in the Neurontin case, and it's what often is described as identifying a background rate, or a, a rate of off-label prescribing that existed prior to the onset of the conduct in question. And that idea, or that approach, really is a carve-out of sorts to recognize that there are conducts, there, there, there are uh, uh, circumstances and, and conditions in the prescribing world that give rise to off-label that have nothing to do with the behavior in question. And so recognition of a background rate is an attempt to take that into account. And as I say, that approach really is about trying to take away those prescriptions that we think are not at issue. The opposite approach, or a different kind of way of getting at this issue, is to identify those prescriptions that's, that decidedly are at issue. And one way to do that, again, used now in the, in the civil case, I believe, is a regression, in the Neurontin case, is a regression approach, or a statistical technique <clears throat> that lays out all the different potential contributors to off-label prescribing. And those could include things like the state of the scientific literature, uh, reimbursement rules, prices of the various drugs in question, uh, how much time there was on the market, all sorts of different issues that could contribute to the amount of off-label prescribing, and of course, including attention to the off-label promotion in question, and allow the statistics to figure out, or using the statistical technique, the statistician or economist can figure out how much off-label prescribing would still have occurred in the absence of the conduct in question. And those two approaches, from a causation perspective, have now been used in a number of different venues. So let me stop at that point and invite us to move to the second se session of our portion of our session. <clears throat>